Day 27, 6.45 a.m. I'm outside of my house, so you know, I'm not really awake. Hey there again, it's about quarter to 12. I did the whole Honda thing and that took about two hours. I was hoping I'd get there early. Uh, I got there at seven and part of that reason was normally I'll go there in the afternoon and end up waiting a few hours. Uh, but I had to wait a few hours anyway. So uh, what I did do though was um, I have a Booster Gold Blue Beetle commission uh, that I have to do, a big one, like 11 by 17. And so I was practicing drawing Booster Gold and I ended up doing it uh, such that it, it's sort of a finished ink headshot um, which might work out because the person basically somebody I had a Ted cord as the Blue Beetle for those that don't know Blue Beetle and Booster Gold are DC characters that have been reinterpreted several times throughout the years but there is a version that is Ted cord and Booster Gold where they're kind of goofy buddies you know um, as like uh, I was going to say tongue-in-cheek, and then my tongue got caught in my cheek. Uh, and that, I, so I did a Ted Core Blue Beetle just as part of Inktober, and I threw it up on Etsy, and somebody bought it. Uh, and I guess she bought it for her husband or boyfriend, husband, I think. And that was a little while ago, and said, hey, do you take commissions? And then she wants to commission me to do an 11 by 17 of the two of them, uh, which is the thing I have to get done by the end of this week. But she also said that come Christmas, she wanted to get the a Booster Gold headshot to match the Blue Beetle and kind of have a, a three-piece going. So I may have inadvertently created the piece that she'll want for Christmas. So like, that's not why I created it. I was just practicing, but it ended up coming out better than I thought. Well, I'll show you the pencils and then the inks I did right here. So here we go, Booster Gold. So I drew this on Bristol with a number two pencil. It was actually a Star Wars pencil, uh, half of a nine by 12. And then I inked it up with a Japanese brush pen and some Copics. So that's what I did while I was waiting. Got back, fed the cats, uh, you know, did a little bit of house stuff. And I was going to sit down to draw, but I'm really tired. I got like three and a half hours sleep last night. So I don't have anything pressing. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to take a nap because I will probably draw better. And also, I have plans to hang out with people later tonight with Q. We're going to go out to dinner and do things tonight. So I don't want to be dead tired for that. And I feel like I'll do a better job drawing if I have some rest. So I don't know. I I'm pretty tired. I'm going to lay down and see if I can take a nap. And if I can, great. And hopefully I'll wake up feeling better. Let's find out. I'm in bed. This is my view from bed. Look at my little footsies. They're tootsies. I've got little piggies. Anyway, I should take a nap. Hey there, it's me, your old buddy Gazbot, and I'm here at the table. What does that mean? Did my nap go successful? Sort no. Well, no. Uh, it's, um, I got into bed, put my phone down, laid there for a few minutes, and fell asleep re relatively quickly, within five, ten minutes, which for me is pretty good. Uh, and I think I was asleep, like for real asleep, 15, 20 minutes. And then they started leaf blowers outside my window and I woke up. So, great! I then tossed and turned and looked at my phone and tried to fall back asleep for a half hour. Eventually I got up and uh, now I'm, you know, living my day. Living my day with some caffeine. Some caffeine from Coke Zero, who is the sponsor of the show. Of course, that's not true! I'm gonna do some work. Let's see what happens. Ah, I finished my Coke Zero. That means time's passed! Indeed, once again you've time jumped. Uh, about an hour, hour and a half. I was working on the Booster Gold and Blue Beetle print, uh, not print, well, sort of print. It's a commission. It's a, I have to do an ink drawing on Bristol. That is what I'm delivering to the client. That is what they want. Um, I don't do that sort of drawing as much as I used to. I still occasionally do it for myself. I still occasionally do it for clients, um, uh, people that commission me, things like that. This is a case where they wanted that specifically, um, but I did talk to them and I said, hey, look, if you don't mind, if it comes out and I like it, I might want to make a print of it. Hi. I might want to make a print of it, I'll cover shipping if that's okay with you. And that's what I usually do. I'll cover shipping or give a few bucks off uh, if people are fine with me making a print of it. And I realize I don't literally need to get permission, uh, but I, I feel better about it because I would hate it if somebody thought they were getting a one of a kind, I'll never reproduce it thing. And I don't reproduce most commissions I do, but occasionally I want to. And so I like to give them the option uh, of saving a little money and that way everybody wins. So that's what I did in this case. Um, and I wasn't sure I would do a print of it, but I do like Blue, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. And it does sort of fit in my non Godzilla wheelhouse, the sort of offbeat, you know, sort of superhero -y Ninja Turtle stuff I do. It does fit in there fairly well. Um, however, it's funny because I was looking forward to this, but it's it's this pressure of doing well. Like they, she bought my Blue Beetle and she liked it, and she's like, "Oh man, are you really get these characters?" And and now I'm being hired to draw characters I like in a goofy situation. It's like everything I like by someone who likes my work. They're not requesting any special style. They're not giving me anything. Like I kind of told them my idea, and they're like, "That's fine," you know. 
and that's a whole different kind of pressure from the, I don't know what I'm doing and this is so far out of my wheelhouse. It's so in my wheelhouse that failure is worse and the pressure is higher and I want, it, I want her to be like, this is amazing and I want myself to be like, this is amazing. And so I was struggling with it a little bit before starting, but once I started, I'm actually pretty happy with where I'm at now. Um, and I, ha I originally thought I was gonna do it uh, landscape, but I'm doing it uh, portrait horizontal. It's 11 by 17. And I got the idea because it would look more similar to a comic book cover as opposed to a pinup. And that's kind of the image I had in my mind of like, oh, if this was a cover of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle or Justice League International back in the late 80s, early 90s when it was more goofy, maybe this was the cover for that issue. Um, and so once I did that, it helped put it into place more. The other thing was, uh, hmm, what was the other thing? The other thing was, uh, I, I, it's gonna, it's a, it's in a pizza shop. The idea is that they're like running a pizza shop badly, you know, and for some reason I, I wanted it to be behind the counter, which I had a hard time finding reference for. There's a lot of, you know, somebody sitting at, Hey, can I help you? But like, I wanted it to be behind so that we're as though we were working with them or their, their manager walking in, seeing what they're doing. Um, so I had to kind of fake that a little bit, but all the worry I had kind of went away easily. I, I didn't even do multiple roughs. I thought I was going to have to do a lot. The first rough I did, and I'll show you in a minute, I was happy with, and I'm going to probably go with, and it started Weirdly enough, with my doing sort of a gesture drawing of Booster Gold, which is a weird way to start, especially when I talk about how I like to construct a background first, but it's a kind of a simple background, it's just sort of a counter, and then the area behind that is dominated by another figure, and the foreground's kind of dominated. So, like, I just needed to hint at where they are more than actually draw an entire pizza restaurant. And I did boost, and I imagined boosters on the register. If you don't know the dynamic, uh, their superheroes the best friends, but they're kind of terrible and they get on each other's nerves and stuff. And Blue Beetle is the more competent one, even though he doesn't have any powers, he's smart and you know. And Booster has like this super suit and he used to be an ex-jock from the future and everything's kind of handed to him and he's kind of like a little bit of a, a what's a, a mimbo, like a male bimbo, you know, but good hearted, but kind of a dope. And he's sort of oblivious. So a lot of times he'll be like unaware of the horrible danger they're in, whereas Blue Beetle's like, Wah! you know. So I wanted to have that be the same dynamic, but they're running a pizza restaurant. So I was just drawing Blue Beetle, imagining he'd be the guy running the register because having worked retail, that's the job you want. That's the easy job. You don't want to be stocking. You don't want to be cooking. You know, I mean, maybe if you hate people, but for me, register is like, you just stand there and take money and talk to people. And he's the charismatic one. So it made sense that he'd be up front. And then I was like, well, what if, you know, he's dealing with a customer, but everything's going wrong behind his back. Blue Beetle's having trouble. So I sort of like had him looking over his shoulder like this and then put, put his finger up like, oh, hold on a minute, sir. As he kind of, for the first time is realizing, oh man, something's going wrong. Uh, and once I did that gesture, the whole thing just came together, and uh, I'll show you. This is going to be black and white, but for my own purposes, I blocked it out in color. So you can see, like I said, I sort of set it up like a cover. Now that's Booster, so he's up there just turning, and he's seeing Blue Beetle, who has been trying to cook a pizza, and it's the fire's coming out, it's smoking, he can barely lift it up. And then down here, you can see a second burn pizza, and I have a fire extinguisher and a water bucket, and I want to have water, and like, as though he's just been burning pizzas for who knows how long. He's terrible at this. Uh, and of course, they're still wearing their superhero suits, which makes no sense, but who cares? And I like the idea of instead of having a regular customer, having a supervillain customer, and this is Despero, who's somebody they fought back in the day, and he's like a really powerful cosmic level villain that could defeat Superman and stuff, but he's in there wanting his thing, and at first I had him just looking grim and mad. Impatiently, like, Brr. but then I got the idea it'd be funnier if he's just acting like a big baby, and he's like, ah! Because I didn't want to put any dialogue in. I mean, I wanted to put dialogue in, but that's not the job. So I wanted to illustrate him being like, Ma, feed me. And so then I'm just by doing like a, like a super cartoony thing. And again, this is kind of where my wheelhouse is. Superhero is done kind of cartoony. Um, and so I was pretty happy with how it came out. I wrote beep, 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 like the, the smoke alarms going off, smoke detector. I might leave that out. Um, I'll probably leave that out. Maybe when I do the print, I'll put it like in color or something. Um, but... I actually, like I said, this is black and white. I might do some grayscale. And actually, I have a version of this where I produce down to grayscale. But just to make sure that all the elements are working the way I wanted to, I did this. So what I'll probably do from here, um, probably not today. I'm gonna, I'm pretty happy with what I did, even though I didn't work in a bunch. But I have till the end of the week, and I'm like, I'm just gonna step away from it, make sure I like it as much as I think I do, because it's weird that I got something done as like. I don't want to say perfect because nothing's perfect and it could always be better, but usually what's in my head comes out way worse. And in this case, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it came out and I'm like, oh, it's great. Which I guess is a lesson to stop thinking about it so much, but it's, it's hard because sometimes I'll sit down and not think about it and garbage comes out. But in this one rare instance, there's a happy gas bot. Now this will go away because now I need to take it and check the perspective, check the anatomy, get everything working right, make sure the costumes are fitting. And at that point, I will start losing my enthusiasm for how good it's coming out. And 
and I will kill all the energy as I always do, but I will still come out with a product that'll be good and happy, but it'll, I'm getting negative. I'm happy and I'm positive, but I'm talking about how I might become negative later. The point is, I'm gonna leave it as is. Uh, I'm going to do some other things around the house. I'm gonna unpack. I still have some things from San Diego I haven't unpacked. Like I've unpacked my clothes and luggage and things like that, but I have some toys that I haven't even opened. And I have some freebie giveaways that I haven't looked at and things like that. So I'm gonna do a little bit of housework, a little bit of fun work, and then um, I'll probably work on the horror A4 before I go to dinner, um, and maybe again after, who knows. But uh, yeah, I'm. I'm I, I don't want to overstate it. I don't want it to seem like ego or anything like that, but I'm really happy with this. And I'm re and it's not like, this is the best thing ever. I could imagine 10 comic covers off the top of my head with these characters, way better. I've seen art online, way better. So this is not my ego saying how great I am. I'm just astounded that I managed to please myself as quickly as I have in terms of the composition and the, the joke and everything. Uh, and it gives me hope that the final piece won't be as tedious as I thought it would be. How horrible is it? How terrible am I? It's going to be a tedious piece. Someone's hired me to draw characters I like in a style I like doing a comedy I like, uh, you know, and I love it. I do. It's just, you know, I'm used to having a hard time with it and it didn't come out. Hey, maybe doing all those prints is paying off because I'm kind of used to this format now. So who knows? Anyway, I'm going to leave before I talk more about how unhappy I am about being happy, right? Hmm. It's about 3.40, I'm outside, only for a moment. I was throwing out trash, litter, and recycling. I also checked the mail, but I don't think the mail came yet today. Um, I... Decided to kind of clean up the litter box. I don't know if I mentioned this. We have a litter robot. It's one of those automatic ones. It's the second one we've had. They work pretty well. We had one for about five, six years. It broke down and we got another. Um, and I've only had like two or three problems with it and they've all been when I've been away uh, on, on vacation or had someone else watching the cats every single time and it resulted in some gross poop mess and that happened when we were in San Diego, unfortunately. Uh, and the person that was watching them for us was nice enough to do their best to clean it up but there was kind of like some smears on the inside that I had to like grossly go in with some spray and but we have also a rubber mat carpet to catch the litter and things like that and if there is an accident it's burning it from destroying the carpet which it served its purpose but she sort of you know wiped up the heavy duty stuff and hung it out on our porch and I've been for a week and a half <laughs> ignoring it so today I finally shook it out as best I could, tried cleaning it, and it just wasn't working. I was spraying it with the, the shower thing and putting bleach on it, and now I'm just gonna let it soak, and that's what's happening in my exciting day. There it is, the soaking poop rug, woo! I haven't drawn a bath in longer than I can remember. Maybe a decade, for any reason. Here we go, giving a bath to the poop rug. <laughs> okay. Well, I just did about 40 minutes. Uh, I don't know if I'll do more now, later, whatever, but I've got my 30 minutes in. Well, 40 minutes, actually. And I have finished the roughs for page three. Let me show you. So if you recall, yesterday I finished Koji and I was working on this panel. I worked on this panel some more. It might not look very different. I, I tilted her head a little bit and moved him down so they were a little bit more correct in perspective. Uh, I also changed her apron. I had a weird sort of strappy thing on the back and I actually looked at how aprons work and it's like a hoop around the neck and then tied and I had some weird like dress looking thing so that's more accurate. I started doing a background here but this is all going to be filled with dialogue so I left it out. Uh, then I did this panel. I was quite happy with this, like, scolding, like, hey, I'm, I'm, mur, 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 whatever she's saying, I forget. And then he's kind of, like, steepling his fingers, like, oh, I see. Now, it's a little bit cheated because if you look here, he's got a chair to his right, which makes it here. Uh, and they're probably, this part of the wall probably is further off, but I kind of cheated it because most of this is going to be covered with balloons anyway, and I just liked the... Um, composition more and I'm realizing more and more that as much as I try to keep everything consistent uh, you know with my animator brain of like where things are placed spatially most people never are gonna realize so I'm trying not to drive myself too crazy but when I zoom out we got page two and three completely roughed when I did the first issue my original roughs were not much more than the thumbnails and some of the roughs uh, like halfway through I started getting more detailed and by the end I was doing more basically pencils that I could then ink on So this time around, you know, some of this needs a little bit more work But it's much tighter than it was last time So I'm trying to cut out a step if I can, you know, hopefully when I sit down to do these Maybe I could ink right on top. Maybe not, but at least it's it's a lot further along and that's my intention So I have these two done. I'm gonna go back and do page one it will be the next thing I do and then go forward from there uh, but for right now, I'm going to go check on the rug that I have in the bathtub and see how that's going. 
Here's another thing. Uh, no, I'm not going to show you the rug again. It's just well lit. What do I have? I have three Green Rangers from the new 6-inch Power Rangers Legacy line. Why? Well, one, because I want one. One, because my friend wants one and I found one for him. And one, because I can't find the Red Ranger, so I will trade the Green Ranger for someone that has the Red Ranger, hopefully. But I'm going to keep one. So now what I do is obsessively check all the paint and make sure that they don't have any flaws. Whichever one has the best paint, I will then choose. If more than one has perfect paint, then I will choose the one with the best box. Or actually maybe the worst box because I opened them. So I will pick the best paint and the worst box, then my friend gets the next best, and then the trade fodder will be the worst. It's a weird process, uh, all just to get me one of each figure and help my friend, whatever. Go, go Power Rangers. So this was the loser of the paint apps because if you look at the white on the teeth there, it's a little bit on the black and that was the worst paint flaw. So this is gonna be trade This fun. one is almost flawless and it's barely perceptible but a little bit of that black on the diamond is up on the gold where it shouldn't be. It's, you wouldn't notice unless you're standing. And this one's the keeper, winner, winner, chicken dinner, best paint apps, go. Go Power Rangers. It is quarter after 12, midnight that is. And uh, I'm going to call it a night-ish. Uh, I might put her around in the bedroom doing a few things. But I'm not doing any more art. Uh, went out with some friends, had a good time. Gave my buddy his uh, Comic-Con toys, got some money back. Had a, had a flip-flap chit-chatting time. But uh, now it's done. It's done for real. Done for real. Day 27. And if today's day 27, well then that means... We got 73 days left. Ooh. Hey, Uncle Charlie. Mm -hmm. Cousin Bober, 73. <laughs>